हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस डिस्कस द क्वेश्चन ऑन इकोलॉजी एनवायरमेंट एंड बायोडाइवर्सिटी फ्रॉम जीएस पेपर थ्री दैट वाज आस्ट इन दिस इयर्स मेंस आई एम टेकिंग द क्वेश्चन नंबर एटीन फॉर डिस्कशन राइट नाउ सो द क्वेश्चन इज द इंटर गवर्नमेंटल पैनल ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज आईपीसीसी हैज प्रिडिक्टेड अ ग्लोबल सी लेवल राइज ऑफ अबाउट वन मीटर बाय ट्वेंटी वन what would be its impact in india and the other countries of the indian ocean region you are supposed to answer this question in 250 words now prime fc when i look at this question this question seems to be a very simple straight forward question from the fundamental courses that we offer here right so this question doesn't demand any separate you know uh, understanding of the context of climate change but yes because this question mentions particularly about ipcc so it would be well and good if you can mention the name of the specific report where they have come up with this particular prediction so answering this question i have mentioned the entire question in a structure of introduction body and conclusion so when you write this answer you can take up these important points and eventually deliver so i have mentioned the ag name of the actual report if you remember the name of the report it's well and good it will obviously support your argument but otherwise also the fact has already mentioned here so you guys can also take the hint from the assessment reports of ipcc although the recently published special report on ocean and cryosphere in the changing climate srocc it is the first and the most most dire prediction that ipcc has made in terms of the sea level rise and they have predicted that the sea level is expected to rise from from close to 1 feet to 3 and a half feet that goes up to somewhere close to 1 meter so this is what is the prediction and it is most likely going to happen by the year 2100 so the context of the question has taken has been taken from this report straight away so to introduce this particular question you can simply mention this particular fact and go ahead now this puts the entire coastal and island territories at risk because we understand that there are places which are so low lying that there is a possibility that with an increase in the average sea level many of these places will obviously see certain submergence so basically what i have done here i have given the all i have given all possible impacts that may be there with regard to in context with the increase in sea water level with increase in sea water level rise so let us see so the impacts i mentioned here the first impact is submergence of coastal low lying areas especially in the densely populated areas like mumbai and maldives i hope you guys know both these places are expected to drown by 2100 depending on the increase in the sea water levels then it can also lead to more and more coastal coastal flooding i hope you understand the rivers that eventually discharge into the ocean water if the water level starts rising the high tides will be more extreme and the the river water will also not be able to discharge that further so it will basically make all the coastal areas of the country quite vulnerable because the question is that as has been asked in the context of india and the indian ocean region i would i would strongly suggest you to take examples from the indian cities as well as the indian ocean ocean region then of course when the areas are going to get submerged it will lead to mass population migration mass population migration is already being seen in certain island territories although we haven't seen it significantly in the in the indian ocean region but if you take example of the pacific island countries you will find lot of people have migrated out from their countries into some other other uh, you know island territories because of the submergence of their own nations right now when there is going to be a mass population migration i hope you understand that this migration will not only be for humans but also for other animals and when there are more humans and animals migrating into the hinterland it's obvious that the available land for all the exploitation purposes for all the humans to settle will be shrinking and it will create more chances for man animal conflict right then these are the things that will happen at the coastal areas then when you talk about oceans in particular there would be a huge loss of plankton's population in the region in fact as per the previous reports of ipcc it is said that because of the increase in temperature and the sea water level rise the plankton population in the oceans may decrease by up to 30% that too in the indian ocean alone right so this is obviously going to be an important point that one should write and remember guys planktons especially phytoplanktons they are the primary producers in the ocean food chain so if the they are the primary producers in the ocean food chain so if the plankton population declines you can understand that the overall food chain of the oceans of the indian ocean region will also be declining i hope you guys understand this particular point then if i look at the next point because of the because of more and more influx of fresh water that will lead to increase in the sea water level there would be a change in the salinity levels of the ocean 
and change in the sanitary levels of the ocean will obviously make makes those organisms very vulnerable which happens to be stenohaline stenohalines are those organisms if you want you can use these kind of expressions stenohalines are basically those organisms that survive at a very narrow range of salinity so if the sanity levels changes it will of course that these organisms are going to be more and more vulnerable and will it will also affect the thermohaline regulation of oceans thermohaline regulation is basically what is ocean currents it is basically the mo permanent movement of water permanent flow of water that happens due to differences of salinity and heat so when you have difference of salinity and heat in the ocean region these movement will also get affected remember in geography you might have studied that thermohaline regulation of oceans it also manipulates the movement of monsoonal winds and also it it brings in monsoons in, in rain brings in rainfall in certain areas and also induces dryness in some other areas right so that may also get affected then in terms of corals they will obviously be dying and the process of dying of corals is known as coral bleaching right when there is a loss of zooxanthellae pigments and we have corals in india in the places like lakshadweep andaman nicobar islands which are already designated hot spots or uh, hope spots sorry not hot hot spots hope spots hope spots are the areas which are designated by an international ngo called mission blue and these are those areas which happens to maintain a unique oceanic or marine biodiversity so both lakshadweep and andamans are richer rich in coral deposits and if there is going to be an increase in the sea water level there they will also become more and more vulnerable and many of them will also go extinct in fact although because of the rise in sea water level and temperature you might have heard that the great barrier reef of australia it has already touched a level that whatever the of the great barrier reef that has been lost which is more than 30 35% it is never going to be recovered now so this loss may also be seen in other coral rich areas then it may also lead to introduction of invasive species now how invasive species are going to get introduced invasive species particularly are those species which can affect the local biodiversity which can affect the native species in terms of nutritional competition and also in terms of you know uh, dom dominating the overall region now invasive species if you consider them closely these are the species that are normally the species that are not naturally found in that area and they get introduced from an outer area from a different area from a different ecosystem so when the sea water level starts rising there would be a chance that more and more land animals or land organisms will get exposed to the uh, to the oceanic regions and when the land animals get exposed to oceanic land animals and plants get exposed to oceanic regions there may be a possibility that certain species from the land may get introduced into the oceans because of the change in salinity levels because of the change in nutrition levels they may get introduced into the oceans and that may eventually become a threat to the natural biodiversity of the oceans like for example when the sea water level starts rising the salinity levels start decreasing and that will be creating more conducive conditions for seaweed sea algae to grow and when the seaweed grows around the coral deposits it will obviously affect the survival of the zooxanthellae algae right so this can also be one of the factors which may be affecting or which may be uh, caused due to rising sea water level then if you look at from the other dimensions of the subject here the economic cost and the loss of infrastructure and the livelihood of the people suppose if the cities like mumbai cities like kolkata and such areas are submerged it's obvious you know that these cities will involve a very massive loss of infrastructure loss of livelihood of the people and the economic cost of shifting and 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 mobilizing this many population will be even greater right and then they it can also lead to events like ocean acidification ocean acidification is not due to the rise in sea water level but due to the influx of you know uh, uh, weak acids into the ocean but of course these things go parallel that's why i've written ocean acidification a little low, late because uh, late late in the answer because it is not a direct impact of sea water level rise but yes because sea water level rise is mostly triggered due to high temperature and that is triggered due to the more and more emissions of carbon based gases or carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide will eventually manipulate the ocean acidic levels the oceans are already getting a little uh, acidic although they are not going to become acidic eventually but they are they are losing their basic nature slowly so that will also change which will of course make many species many organisms especially soft bodied calcifying organisms very vulnerable you know then uh, increase in the population pressure of the available land yes of course when there is going to be mass mobilization of animals and humans it is of course going to increase the population pressure and when there is an increase in population pressure on the available land it will obviously affect the food security of the region 
food security will get more and more vulnerable the the food it may lead to more and more food crisis and that will eventually trickle into more socio economic crisis although uh, th this doesn't stand as a as a very strong example of sea water level rise but you guys know that due to climate change impact there has been a change in the monsoonal patterns and we what we have witnessed last year in the year 2022 in pakistan because of the massive monsoonal floods in the region they have they have they have take they have been facing a strong economic crisis and that crisis have went on even till today so it has it has gone it has already they have already witnessed uh, you know passing of one year since the since the floods of 2022 but still the situation is nowhere better so it shows that a crisis created due to climate change or due to any of these climate change induced events can eventually lead to socio economic crisis right so when we see the situation of food security when we see the situation of socio economic crisis in the in the region of pakistan we can see that these kind of things may also happen in other developing countries of indian ocean region now relations with other indian ocean countries will also get affected now if the country like maldives starts witnessing massive flooding or massive submergence the people of maldives will also try to rescue themselves to a different area and when they would rescue themselves to a different area they may prefer to migrate into an area which is more safer so india can become a good destination for them bangladesh can become a destination even people from sri lanka may also see some kind of migration and if such kind of migratory patterns are observed it can give rise to influx of climate based refugees climate refugees their population their numbers may start growing and this has already been seen in some pacific island countries although in india we don't acknowledge them as climate change refugees but it is very obvious that many people in india also migrate due to flooding of the village because of excessive monsoons because of some kind of drought like condition which is induced due to climate change in the climate change climate change in the climate and such kind of things may also occur so this is also one of the aspect from international relation point of view that may also be triggered due to increase in the sea water level so you can understand that we have not only covered the ecological dimensions here but we have also covered the economic dimension we have also covered the dimension of population pressure food security socio economics and also from the context of international relations so these are the possible dimension that one can expect to write in this answer then in terms of concluding this answer i have taken the conclusion straight away right so i have mentioned you know like in this particular answer i would suggest students to write a balancing as well as a visionary conclusion right although you can also feel like writing a solution based conclusion here right solution based conclusion along with balancing and visionary conclusion so here when you try to write a solution based conclusion you can easily mention that uh, you know adhering to the principles adhering to the objectives of paris agreement or the suggestions of ipcc these are the things that should be implemented in later and later and spirit so that we are able to avoid any possibility of further increase in the average sea water level rise so you can see that india is still among one of the most vulnerable countries to climate change thus efforts like paris agreement objectives needs to be realized in letter and spirit as the vulnerabilities are on the rise and urgent responses are needed at both national and global level so this is the conclusion that i have created for this particular answer it seems to fit in the argument of the solution that have been placed in the domain of climate change and with this you can write a very good standardized answer for this question thank you guys